Sarah Pochenich. Welcome back to another fun, fast, and fabulous Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you this really cool out of bounds type effect. and I help creatives up their game with inspiration and know-how. Here, you'll find beginner-friendly projects and tutorials for Photoshop, photography, design, and more. Be sure to check the description below for any links or free downloads mentioned in this video, and hit me up at karaplichinich.com to check out my full library of in-depth courses. And while you're there, grab my free creative toolkit, an ever-growing collection of Photoshop actions, templates, design assets, and more. Okay, so this process is much simpler than you might imagine. The first thing that you want to do is place your type and figure out how it's going to relate to the subject in your photo. So the text, the font that I'm going to be using today is called Beautiful Minds. And it's a wonderful font um, collection, really, uh, that contains both a serif version and then a handwritten font. And so they complement each other really well. And there's even this cool dingbat collection that comes with it. But you can use any pair of fonts that you want. So the first one that I'm going to use here is this serif 2. And whoop, the reason why I'm choosing serif 2 is I want whatever, you know, character, whatever um, font that you choose to use for your main typographic element, you want to make sure that it has body to it. So a thin, very tiny, super lightweight script font would not work for this. You want something uh, with some heft to it because the photo is going to be in this area. So that's why I'm going to go with this and I'll just set this type here. So now I'm just going to scale it up. Something here and a little bit larger. I want it to be almost as big as her, but not quite because I, I like the idea of having her kind of popping out of it. There we go. Something about like this. I'm going to temporarily reduce the opacity by just pressing the number five on my keyboard so I can position it and then I can still see her underneath and see how this is going to fit. So this is kind of fun. If I catch, I like the idea of having her heel down here in the letter. And then this, the rest of her foot here can be outside of it. And then this leg will be out on the other side of the letter. So I think that's pretty good. I might scale it up just a little more. So her head is still coming out, but maybe not quite as much. I think that's going to be pretty awesome. So the main thing is that you want to make sure that at the bottom of the letter, you have a natural ending place for your subject. So in this case, we can see her entire foot, so that's a natural ending. If you're working with a closer image of your subject where, you know, maybe their legs are not in the picture, so it's like cut off at their uh, hips or waist or something, um, then you want to make sure that the letter is going to support that. So it just takes, you know, practice and trial and error. Okay, so now what we're going to do is select the shape of this letter. So in my layers panel, I'm going to hold down command or control and click the thumbnail for the type layer. And that puts marching ants around it. Now I'm going to go back to my background layer and target it by clicking. And I'll come down here and then click the mask button. So now we see that she is in the shape of the letter. The letter is kind of obscuring it, so we can turn that off and hide it. So this is looking pretty good so far. I am really liking it. Um, but the next thing we want to do is actually select her. So for right now, I'm going to temporarily hide this layer mask 
by shift clicking on it and that cancels it as you can see it it hides it so now I'll click back to the image area of this layer and now I'm gonna come up here to the select menu and choose subject and Photoshop's gonna just select her and it may not be perfect but it's it actually looks like it's pretty dang close and it's perfect enough for this particular use. So now that I've got her selected, we're gonna keep her selected, come back to the layers panel, turn the mask back on by shift clicking it one more time. And now I'm just gonna paint in the areas where she is outside of the letter. So I wanna make sure I click back on the mask so I'm not painting the actual image, so click back to the mask. I'm gonna grab my brush tool and I'm gonna paint with white paint over here. I wanna make sure that I have a normal blend mode up here. Um, you know, my opacity and flow and stuff is set accordingly. And then I'm just gonna paint, paint her in. And uh, that's it, we can get rid of our Selection by pressing Command or Control D for deselect. And that's kind of all there is to it. So let's finish this off with a quick background. I'm gonna press C to get the crop tool and I'm just gonna drag out a square crop with some room for her around here. We'll commit that. And I'm gonna add a background gradient by coming down to the bottom of the layers panel and I'm going to choose an adjustment layer that is a gradient. We'll come over here, maybe something in the blue, blue range, something simple like that. This, And I'm going to change it from linear to radial. So you see that it kind of has this bright spot in the middle and I can actually move that around as long as I have this dialog open, I can click and move the center point of this radial gradient. So we'll put it there and I'm gonna drag it underneath her. There we go. And if I want to make any more adjustments, I can just double click that thumbnail. I might wanna scale it up a little. So it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, that looks good. And let's add a subtle drop shadow to the layer with the actual photo. So I'll click to target that layer, come down to the bottom of the layers panel and add a drop shadow. And just tweak this accordingly. A very subtle drop shadow, nothing crazy. <laughs> that looks pretty good. And then let's finish it off by adding the rest of her name in the complementary typeface. So I'm gonna switch back to the type tool and I'm gonna click to create a new type layer and I'll just type out her name. And this time I'm gonna use all lowercase and we'll commit that. Move this around. Now, again, what I like so much about this particular font is that it's not just one, but it's really two and they work together as a nice set. So while I used the serif version for the large initial here, for the rest of her name, I'm gonna change it from the serif version to the script slant version. So I'll click on that and you can see that these really just work together quite nicely. I think I'll scale this up a little bit bigger, commit that, and there you have it. It's a pretty simple effect that really packs a big punch. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again at the next tutorial.